and welcome to this special summer edition of Tech 24. With the excuse that it's hot and sunny, we decided to get out of the studio and into the streets of Paris. We take this opportunity to show you the Parisian tech scene, where it all begins, a few of its success stories and where it is heading. We start a couple of blocks from here in a neighborhood called Sentier in the second arrondissement of Paris. The Sentier neighborhood used to be Paris' manufacturing district. And here is where the city is crafting its tech future. Since the late 1990s, the Sentier has increasingly become home to many internet startups and incubators, which has given birth to the nickname Silicon Sentier. A tech future under construction. Welcome to Glee. For now, a construction site. But in a few months, this will be Paris' largest tech incubator. 1,500 square meters designed to support the development of around 200 startups. Behind this initiative, the city of Paris, Orange, and Google. The internet giant is investing close to a million euros in France's tech future. Well, Google chose one unique program in France into which they wanted to invest, and that was us. And we have tested programs such as, well, co-working, our accelerator program, our beta testing program that have proven results already and that we're actually uniting in this area. A few blocks away, another tech giant is also building the French tech future around its own ecosystem. Microsoft, a long-time investor in France, opened its own startup incubator in Paris back in March. Welcome to Spark. Here you have three months in the Spark program to turn your idea into a prototype. And for that, you can count on the help of coaches like Roxanne Varza, also known as Startup Lover. We'll get to the question about your nickname in a second. But first, you were involved in this project from the very beginning. I would like to ask you, what's your opinion about places like this, the importance of places like this for the tech economy? Are incubators still relevant in an era of crowdfunded projects? Definitely. Um, Spark, we built Spark actually to respond to what we felt was quote unquote missing in the local ecosystem. Um, this space and the, the type of uh, support that we provide to startups actually is much more early stage than some of the other offers that you see. We're really here to help entrepreneurs kick their idea off the ground and build that first prototype. So actually it's completely uh, relevant even if startups are getting crowdfunding or support in other ways, um, a lot of the time they need that extra support, especially technical support, to put their product together. Now across Europe, accelerators are offering um, advice, cash and even office space in exchange for equity. What is unique about what you're doing here at Spark? We're not taking any equity. <laughs> so startups actually are completely free uh, to come in and they, they use our space. We're providing a, essentially um, a new type of uh, acceleration program, which is uh, business uh, coaching or mentoring, design help, and also technical support. Now, how would you define the French tech scene? And what are your predictions for the future? I have always been very positive on the French tech scene, even sometimes maybe to an extreme level. Uh, I've seen the ecosystem grow dramatically um, over the last few years. It's really, really changing. Right now, um, a lot of the, the new types of things that we're seeing happen to be around incubators, um, you know, support programs. Investors are actually starting to look more and more to the French market because they're realizing the quality of the, the tech that's coming out of this ecosystem is actually growing. And it's also nice to see the government um, taking a, a very solid interest in developing projects like Paris Capital Numérique as well. Thanks for that. Thank you so much, Roxanne Varza. And uh, we now turn to an example of a startup that did pretty well for itself. Uh, what do you get when you mix gaming and social networking? Pretty simple. A very, very profitable company. Losing interest in scrolling through your Facebook news feeds? How about solving a criminal investigation with your Facebook friends instead? Criminal Case is the latest offering from French gaming company Pretty Simple. Nine million people are playing it around the world every day. We've simply taken advantage of a gap in the market. There was no way for a group of friends to play a police investigation game, so we created it. Strangely, it's an idea which just hadn't been exploited in social gaming. 
a concept which is quickly gathering steam and in a flourishing market. Facebook's games industry is continuing to grow up 12% last trimester. To keep up with demand, the company are firing out new investigations every week. It all begins here at the startup's Parisian headquarters. We're not going into all that, when clearly that's what pushed her to commit suicide, so to speak. Writers pitch and compare their ideas, delving deep into what makes a good who done it. We've all watched a lot of crime investigation series, that's why we're here. And I've spent hours and hours looking through crime encyclopedias to find out what terrible things humans are capable of. Terrible things brought to the screen in polished graphics. Every detail counts. We have a quota for a certain amount of objects, which must fit in with their environment, so that it's not totally abstract. But we also throw in a few which have nothing to do with anything, to keep it fun. The recipe seems to be working. Criminal cases free, but 1% of players are happy to pay out and step up their experience of the game. Case solved and rested. With a growing fan base, a steady profit looks set to flow. And our trip through Made in France technology continues. We're now in the outskirts of Paris to test this driverless car. It's actually uh, not a driverless car in itself because there is a, a driver behind this idea. Jean-Marc Leroux is piloting this car with his tablet. How exactly can you do that? Um, so basically the car is connected using Wi-Fi and our technology called Orbit. Uh, Orbit is a technology we developed at Iris and the goal is to be able to connect every object together. So here for example a car to a tablet. But what's important is that thanks to Orbit the car can actually be connected to anything else. Like what for example? Uh, like for example parking space. Uh, so you go to the airport and you could just leave your car in front of the airport and push a button on your phone. Your phone is connected to the car, the car connects to the airport and you can just drive it uh, to the parking space uh, to park it in, in an optimized fashion. Can I, can I try? Can I have a go? So of basically the, the way this works is there's a computer inside the car, a computer yes. inboard and, and, and now I can basically control all the functions of the car yes. through your app. Exactly. Uh, so I can, for example, lower and, and raise the window. Yes. That is very impressive. Uh, I'm going to try and open it now. There you go. And I can also change the direction of the wheel. I, I know that we're talking about here, um, it's, it's a wider use. It's a smart car that's connected to several, uh, several spaces. But do you think we're going to be able to use this technology, like almost like playing a video game with a car? Uh, the goal is not to uh, provide a way for people to drive like in a video game. It would be too uh, dangerous. Too dangerous, uh, exactly. Well, yeah, actually. Uh, the goal is to create new services uh, uh, where your car can connect to other, uh, other buildings, other cars, uh, any other object to create, uh, well, those new services that will uh, change the way you drive or the way you interact with your car. All right, well, we'll leave it to it. Thank you so much, Jean-Marc Leroux, for joining us today. Thank and thank you for watching this special summer edition of Tech24. You can keep the conversation going on Facebook and on Twitter, and I'll see you next week.